Everard, what does Bordier do and why are you here in Asia? We're a merchant bank and we focus solely on private individual and high net worth clients. And we've been doing this for exactly 170 years. And so we know a little bit about uh, asset management and we know also uh, something about transgenerational wealth and, and how to protect and enhance the wealth from one generation to the next. We started operation in 2011 and uh, it's been now just three years and now we're breaking into the Asian market. And what's your value proposition for clients here in Asia? First, um, private banking as a whole is changing, so it's not enough just to see what the other people are doing, but to try to find the next curve and where is private banking lead us to. And uh, I believe that management uh, will be less important going forward. And we, as an institution, uh, focus more on, on, on protecting and, and enhancing the wealth from one generation to the next. Uh, and because I'm the living proof that uh, we can protect and enhance the wealth and pass it over, whereas any other banks, it's just not I'm selling the product and a service. And in 20 years from then, or five years from now, they'll be gone to another institution, whereas we are here to stay for the long run. So that's one element that is uh, quite different. I'm obviously personally here, and as an owner, uh, the lines and the decisions are made much more quicker. So it's more efficient uh, and we're faster to transform ourselves. I think the future uh, will require uh, quite a bit of transformation. And Everard, what are some of the changes that we have seen in private banking and what changes might we see in the years ahead? So if you take private banking and you imagine private banking as a tree, uh, the roots and the invisible side of private banking were essentially confidentiality, trust, connection with the uh, between the, the client and the banker. Uh, the banker knew it all. Uh, the client was just coming. And that created uh, that the systems of the bank, which is the trunk, if you will, um, are all internal. So the bank created all banking platform internally. Everything process was held by the institution. And every offering to the client was to be done by the bank itself to its clients, so a very captive market. Um, and that has run for decades. And now you see that the invisible side of things and the, 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 the roots of, of the new private banking uh, is transparency. And that changes everything because obviously then the trunk and the operating system should be that anything that is no added value to you, you should outsource. So all your banking platform should be redesigned and rethought. And all the products and services you're offering should be different. Uh, it should be more transparent, but also completely opened, uh, which a lot of people say they are, but in practice it may not be the case. Um, so it changes completely also the offering you're making. So I think that is such a sh huge shift in the banking uh, industry that um, uh, it redefines a lot what people are doing. From brokerage, is brokerage going to be lasting long term because there'll be a compression on the margins? Uh, will be asset management, will be the ones who will be uh, winning in the future when again clients are not willing to part and give control to bankers in Asia on asset management. So it's true questions uh, uh, to redefine private banking that are happening now and it's quite exciting because it's a huge opportunity but obviously also a big risk. And what should Swiss private banking mean to clients today? It should mean quality and, and trust uh, with the institution they have and obviously experience. Uh, it cannot mean the old, as I said, secrecy, confidentiality, uh, um, uh, parking assets for rainy days. I think that has completely transformed again. And, and private Switzerland itself will keep its standing, I think, of being very professional, very upmarket, very diligent and very precise. Uh, you can see it through pharmaceutical industry, through the watch industry. I think the hidden thought of people will remain that this, this is qualifies what Switzerland should be. But the bank itself and the operation will have to change, obviously, to reflect the new standards. And what do you see as the main challenges to the private banking model? To come back to the Swiss people, I think they are uh, quite intelligent. Uh, I don't say that because I'm Swiss, but I think generally they're quite resourceful in, in finding alternatives. And I believe that Switzerland will do fine in reinventing itself 
uh, but generally the challenges uh, for existing institutions, uh, will, especially the large ones, will be important because if you have a, a brokerage model as your base and your core of your business and you see uh, a compression of, of brokerage fees, uh, you have to redefine who you want to be in the future. And so uh, technology will help a lot, uh, new processes, um, but there is a lot of breaking silos, there's a lot, lot of, uh, of internal struggles in to try to bring change. And so uh, maybe a younger workforce will help better than an older one. Uh, and it's, it's truly quite uh, transforming as, as, a, as a situation at this point. So it depends on which model every bank has been doing. And obviously there's lots of help outside, there's lots of people that can uh, assist in transforming the business, but you need a real will. And it's always easier not to do anything. It's easier not to, to take by the horns the issues and deal with them. And um, that has led to many, many, uh, obviously, transformation and bankruptcy and failures because people were unwilling to change. But it's not only in the banking industry, it's everywhere, right? And Everard, what should a client expect from their relationship with Bourdieu? And is that different in Asia than it would be in Europe? The clients should have uh, a very tailor-made and personal experience in both institutions. However, the services and products offers will be different between uh, Europe and Asia because you cannot apply the European model into Asia. And I think other institutions have tried and have not been as successful as what they might expect. So uh, a client should feel at home, should feel that they are finding a, a true partner who will work in their best interest. Um, but similarly, uh, they will access more Asia being booked in Asia and more Europe and the US being booked in Europe. And the client can choose where he wants to be booked, it's not a problem.